Welcome to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Storyteller Issue 6, A Night in the Elysian Fields. On the cover, Diane and her clique, Vanessa with Edwin, and Perdu hovering over his shoulder, dance on the gym floor surrounded by grapevines. The cover is bordered with a Greek meandros pattern. We turn the page and our story begins. On the first page of the issue, just inside the cover, there's an editor's note. This arc contains graphic imagery, violence, and substance abuse. Our first Valentine's issue opens on the storyteller in his study. He's writing something, though we don't see what. On the fourth panel of him frantically writing, there's a distant doorbell and he quickly exits. After a moment, he returns with a heart-shaped box of chocolates and red roses. He looks up at the reader from the doorway and says, It's Valentine's Day and hearts are overflowing with blossoming romances coming and going. A Valentine's dance is swiftly approaching, and heartbreaks are equally swiftly encroaching. Four hormonal teenagers prepare and get ready, two going stag and two going steady. Will their love blossom? What will it yield? Find out in this issue, A Night in Elysian Fields. The storyteller puts the chocolates and roses on the table, next to his now-closed comic. The cover is the same as our issue. He flips the page, and our story begins. The dance started officially about 15 minutes ago and is being held in the gym of Moon Harbor Prep School. So since it has been 15 minutes since it's officially started, is anybody already there or is anybody fashionably late? I was there when it started. I was there because we were doing all the setup for it. But we've made an exit because we're going to make a reappearance in new costumes. Oh, perfect. Are we playing by the rules that we are all, like, open about the fact that we are monsters? Is this, like, a world where monsters are super open? Or is this a, like, we are all hiding that kind of thing? I think it's it's more of a hidden thing. Perfect. Cool. So, as far as we know, most of the average students here are just, like, people. Yes. Love that. I think that Vanessa would be more of the fashionably late crowd. She would... Assuming that Edwin is fine with that, she would be wanting to show up relatively late and steal Diane's thunder as she arrives. Edwin is 100% on board with that. Mm -hmm. And Purdue, what about you? When Diane first came to set up, like three hours before it started, Purdue was already there, like across the street, staring at the entrance. And then when Edwin arrives, two minutes later, he entered the uh, the building. Cool. So I want you guys to decide who's going to arrive first. And like, I'm totally here to hear about like, what's your entrance like? What are you wearing? <laughs> if Vanessa is planning on making like a second entrance after I enter, then I think I have to be first because Vanessa wouldn't have even crossed my mind. I'm planning on arriving like 25, 30 minutes late, regardless of who is trying to make an appearance after me. I want to arrive once, like, most of the student body is there. We are all in matching, like, black leather dresses. Well, May and I are matching black leather dresses. Uh, Theo is in a black leather tux with a skirt. And Buck is in what can only be described as booty shorts and a black leather vest. And it's black leather with, um like grapevines stitched in gold stitching all over it. Mine is strapless, um, pretty low cut uh, cleavage and probably comes down to like mid thigh. Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And I'm going to say not thigh high boots, but like tall black boots. I am so about these outfits. (laughs) We also all have what look like laurels in our hair, like the the um, crown of leaves kind of thing. And they are gold with black berries. Perfect. And also since your click was in charge of like setting up the dance, did you guys pick a theme? Are there decorations? The theme is One Night in Athens. And it is all very Greek themed. There are very, very large statues that are clearly of Greek gods and somehow real grapevines like growing up the walls and big old archways. All the food is like 
ambrosia or grapes or grape leaves, those kinds of things. Bunch of olives. <laughs> Bunch of olives. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's it is very on the nose. We also uh, coordinated, so the person doing lights, as we made our entrance at exactly 8.45, the lights, like, spun and hit us, and, like, there's a wall behind us that doesn't look like it's got anything, but when the light hits it a certain way, uh, the whole thing lights up in, like, gold, almost like gold embroidery. There's, like, really, really fine gold filament on the wall. So when the light hits us as we walk in, we get that, like huge gold archway behind us in this really fine gold filament oh excellent i like how it's a gym but there's totally fancy lighting because it's a prep school <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah yeah i feel like it's like a cafeteria uh, like a gym and an auditorium together because even though this is a prep school it's still like the arts still don't get any real money ouch <laughs> there are like spotlights set up next to the G- dj booth up on stage and, like, we hired two people, two underclassmen, to work the spotlights. Excellent. Yeah, I'm guessing Vanessa and Edwin are next, since I'm sure Purdue is following them. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to let Edwin decide what he wants to come in. We can collectively agree that that's what we picked together. But as for what Vanessa is wearing, I'm going to be going for your style. If Diane is going low, Vanessa's going high. If you're going for all the accessories, I'm going to try and make you look as overdressed as possible standing next to me. I'm going to come in a nice, long blue dress, knee length, nice and stylish, with gold embroidery all around the edges. You know that Greek uh, swirling style they have? Oh, I'm, I'm very familiar. <laughs> yeah, just that. That's the piece. And I'm showing up like that. <laughs> Amazing. And Edwin, what are you wearing? What Edwin was planning on wearing was a pair of dress pants that don't quite fit, a Blood Brothers t-shirt, and then over top that, just like a suit jacket they clearly got at a thrift store. I don't know if Vanessa would let that fly and Edwin would eventually cave. I think you'd cave. I think we'd pick out... Possibly a nice suit to keep the outer layer, as in a nice uh, shirt suit to go underneath. Cool. The one thing you won't cave on is uh, the like leather with um, very small spike uh, chokers. That can stay. Excellent. And you guys are arriving after after Diane. Let's say if Diane's arriving at eight forty five sharp, then we'll arrive at nine sharp. That seems sensible. Perfect. And Purdue, are you following them in? I'm like two minutes behind them. Cool. And what are you wearing? Okay, so I'm wearing like velour pants that haven't been in fashion since the 50s. And I have a really faded tuxedo jacket, which is really out of place. Like it's not overdressed because it's not a tux type of party. So it's just weird. And I have a bow tie on, um, but like like sexy in a Doctor Who kind of fashion, if that makes sense. Like that outfit shouldn't work. And it looks like I am i don't have any money for clothes at all. And I just took my grandfather's clothes from the attic. But it makes me look, look super sexy. So terrible outfit, but Purdue is just hot enough to pull it off. <laughs> yeah, and it gives him like a sort of mysterious sexy vibe. I love it. So since I guess it's like a bit after nine at this point, most of the student student body that's coming is here. Like there's a dance floor going on that's fair, fairly crowded. Like if you're shy about dancing, it's crowded enough that you can go and dance. There are several chaperones that are trying to keep this party PG. <laughs> like there's one guarding the entrance to the locker room since this is the gym. There's like one by the door as you enter. And there's a few that are like circling around the dance floor, keeping an eye out for stuff. I think they've been warned ahead of time about Diane. Can I start a scene with one of them? Absolutely. Perfect. I think like the notoriously not cool mom who chaperones every dance. I don't know who she is, but she's like the mom who chaperones every single dance. Her daughter is absolutely mortified every time she she does this. <laughs> I think her daughter is like, desperate to be in my clique but i am just not having it i think i want to go up to her and be like miss williams hi it's so good to see you again how's your valentine's day going 
Oh, it's going very well. I'm excited to be here. We are so excited to have you. Thank you so much for chaperoning. I just wanted to ask you a question about Amy. I heard that she got asked out by a friend of mine and she said no. And I just wanted to find out what was happening. Is she okay? I wasn't aware about that. Who 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 was this friend? Well, my friend Buck over there, and she points to Buck who is in black leather vest and booty shorts and like tall boots. And she's like Buck just thinks Amy's the greatest. They're in English together, and he just thinks she's so smart. And she said no, and I'm just a little worried about her. We see Ms. Mrs. Williams looking Buck up and down. Oh, she said no? Oh, thank God. <laughs> that is, I'm sure your friend is lovely, but uh, as a mother. <laughs> oh, it's just what the kids are wearing nowadays, Miss Williams. It's Trish, right? Can I call you Trish? No. You may not call me Trish. Oh, of course. Sorry, Miss Williams. Just, you know, it's just what the kids are wearing. But I actually haven't seen Amy all night. Is she here? Well, I drove her here, so she should be. If I were you as a mother, I would just go check on her because I'm a little bit worried about her. She takes a second to look around the room. Um, I'll be right back. Perfect. If you want me to uh, do the bot loyalty move, um, you can give a side character a string on you to tempt them to do your bidding. The MC will tell you what sort of bribe, threat, or coaxing it'll take to get that character to do what you want right now. Yeah, I think that works. And I, th- I think you've shown what coaxing you've done. Cool. Excellent. So then she gets a string on me. And she did what I wanted. So now she's clear. She's gone. And I signal over to Theo. And Theo comes over and has a packet of some sort of powder. And dumps it into one of the three punch bowls. Okay, so Edwin has two more chances. <laughs> and I think I like whisper something in uh, Theo's ear and then point over at Vanessa and Edwin who are dancing. Yeah, why don't we take that and go over to you two? I imagine that I would be leading you in a nice slow dance somewhere near the center of the room, trying to make sure we're nice and visible, just leading you around by the hand. I like that. Nice and classy and going high while Diane goes low. Have you seen Diane at all tonight? I imagine I've caught her out of the corner of my eye a few times. A few small smirks in her direction. But I've very deliberately not been going out of my way to find her. I haven't been showing her any more regards than anyone else in the room. Excellent. I've been paying a lot of attention to like the punch bowl situation. So it may look like I'm paying paying a lot of attention, but I'm looking for an opportunity there. So do you see them spiking one of the punch bowls? Probably. That cool with you? Yeah, that's cool with me. And I think upon seeing that, Edwin's going to pull Vanessa in close and kind of gesture over at the punch bowls. I think uh, the weird team over there just put something in one of the bowls. And like, I'm going to open my coat jacket a little and we see like a bottle of vodka. I'm like, I was just going to go with alcohol. So I'm probably going to, so I'll be looking over at the punch bowl at that point. And I'm already on guard for any shenanigans Diane might be pulling, but not too worried because I know that I have the occult muscle to back anything up if I need to. I would probably have... Diane's cult symbol somewhere with me on my person so that as a backup just in case so I'm just going to just nod and smile and say yeah sure let's stick to our own drinks for tonight I glance over at the bowl again and I'm like it does look fun though I wonder what's in there I'm just going to grin at that and say let everyone else find out first, then give it a try. I think at that, we see in the background, probably some of you guys don't know, they're kind of quiet, but this kind of like shy looking girl go over and dip a glass in and start taking a few sips. I don't know if anything necessarily happens right away. I think it's up to you what you, what you spiked it with, Diane, but people are starting to drink it. So Nepenthe is the drug I was going with. 
It comes from Greek literature and uh, specifically meaning anti-sorrow or that which chases away sorrow. But it's a drug of forgetfulness and it's going to make people forget their inhibitions. Perfect. And how long would you say it takes to like really kick in? Like five to ten minutes. Cool, cool, cool. I think just long enough that like people have like they forget that they drank the punch and that is the thing that's doing this to them. Excellent. Erdu has definitely drunk from the punch. Yeah, I was about to ask where you are since uh, Edwin is in the center of the dance floor and is quite surrounded by people. Okay, so at some point, Edwin hears a whisper in his ear that goes, I like the other jacket better, but when he turns around, there's no one there. And uh, at that point, Perdu goes to the punch bowl and takes a drink. God, I love you, you little creepy fucker. Oh my god. Um, I think as he takes a drink, we see in the background the girl who had first taken a, a drink. Uh, let's call her uh, Molina Flores. This started like head over to the dance floor and is looking looking ready to party when previously she had looked very like, oh god, what do I do? Diane, a girl comes up to you. Her her hair goes down to a bit past the shoulders. Uh, black, very perfect curls. This is Katarina, who... Is fairly popular and definitely not part of your clique. She wants nothing to do with it. And she's holding a box with like a, a slit on the top. She says to you, oh, hey, do you have a vote for our Valentine's royalty? I think I smile and I'm like, oh, for we're calling it Cupid and Aphrodite this year. Didn't you get the memo? I just wanted to make sure that everyone's on brand with the theme, our Cupid and our Aphrodite. She kind of grits her teeth or her grits a t- a teeth, her teeth at you and says, Sure. Okay. Whatever you want to call it. Are you going to vote? <laughs> of course I am. I definitely have a suggestion, but I just got to ask who have people been voting for so far? What's our like our two it couples? And I want to use that same move. I give someone a string on me and then you tell me what sort of bribe thread or coaxing it'll take to get me to do what they want or to get them to do what I want. I think you would have to do something for her. Like, I don't think that you can just try to bully her or coax her. I think there has to be something in it for her. Okay. I think we get a moment of the two of us, like, staring off at each other. And then finally I'm like, all right, fine. Let's let's do it this way. And I, like, hold my hand out. And May is right there because May is always right there. And May, I'm like, May, can I have your earrings, please? And May takes off her gold earrings with, like diamond and i put them in katarina's hands so now who are our two it couples tonight katarina smirks and she says well i'm not supposed to be looking but a lot of people don't necessarily go with the couples for our aphrodite you've got a fair amount of votes i think we're about tied though you and me or me and someone else oh me and you of course of course How's our how's our friend Vanessa doing? She's uh coming in about fourth right now. We should really try to make sure that she does well. I think that would be really wonderful for her. And I take out a piece of paper and like the camera pans in as I in perfect penmanship scrawl Vanessa's name on it. And I like tuck it in the box and I'm like, I think we could really make it worth your while if Vanessa were to do well tonight. She grins and says, hmm, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I think the, like, over-the-top, like, cheek kiss thing, like, mwah, mwah, I send her on her way. Before she does, she says, as for the Cupids, uh, your friend Buck is doing pretty well. I mean, that's fine with me. The Cupid's less important than the Aphrodite. We all know the myth. That's true. There's also some votes for this, like, kind of weird guy, this Purdue. Like, he's cute, but, like... What? (laughs) I think I smile and I'm like, I mean, Purdue could be interesting too. We've got some fun planned for our winners. So I want to make sure that the right people win. I completely agree. And she turns away from me to go uh, get votes from somebody else. And I think uh, from the camera we see, once she turns away from you, her tongue kind of sticks out. And we see a snake's tongue that kind of flickers a bit before going back inside. Phenomenal. Before we send them off, I think I turn to Theo and I have a like vial with me 
And I'm like, it looks like our friends aren't drinking the punch. So let's make sure that they get some of this, shall we? Are you telling him anybody in particular? Uh, That was specifically directed at uh, about Vanessa and Edwin. Excellent. And you did say that there were three different punches. So just making sure we all remember that. Only one is spiked at the moment. That's right. I think it's the one like closest to the um, like stage. So it's like the one that most people are going to. But yeah, I think it's only the one. Okay. So yeah, I would like to see uh, Buck heading over to Edwin and Vanessa. So Edwin and Vanessa, you guys are, are you guys still on the center of the dance floor? Yes, I'd say so. That works for me. Cool. So you guys see Buck come over. So Vanessa, I know you have this rivalry with Diane, but how is your how is your relationship with her clique? I'd say that we're probably still on good terms. I know about Diane's identity, and that gives me power with her. But as far as the rest of her clique are concerned, I just sort of faded into the group, faded out of the group. No bad blood there. Any bad blood between me and Diane would mostly be private. Okay, cool. The buck comes over in his absolutely incredible outfit. (laughs) I'm so in love with it. So Buck and his booty shorts walk over to you. And he kind of, he sidles up next to Edwin in a very, in like a way that is very much, don't pay attention to him, pay attention to me kind of way. Hey, have you guys, uh, have you guys tried any of the punch yet? What'd you put in there? Is it fun? It's pretty fun. We've, we've only gotten one of them though so far. I thought I'd come over and offer you guys something even better. Uh, and he he pulls out this vial and then he uh, he winks over at Vanessa See, I think that Vanessa's going to rise to this one. I don't think she's going to take a direct challenge like that unanswered. So she is going to flash a nice charming smile over at Diane and say, Yes, this sounds wonderful, Buck. Could you go over and do me a favour? Could you tell Diane I accept the handicap? It won't be an issue. Amazing. So he's holding out the vial the vial to you. Do you take it? Yes. So I will uncork it. I assume there's a cork involved. I will down half of it and then, assuming I'm still standing after having drunk it, offer the other half to Edwin. Yeah, I take it with like a shaking hand and i think we get when we get the shot of me downing the rest of it my eyes are like super bloodshot (laughs) so diane what did you give them so you know how the theory about the oracles at delphi is that they were like inhaling like noxious fumes and that's what made them hallucinate yep this is essentially those noxious fumes but like distilled into a liquid so super super hallucinogenic super super like trippy Definitely going to make you lose control a little bit. You do realize you're doing this to the person who can cause hallucinations. Love that. That's fun for me. Oh my god, I'm so excited about this. I think this is probably similar in that it's going to take a few minutes to really kick in. So Buck takes the vial back from you, Edwin, and takes it back to Diane. And he he grins at her and shows her the empty vial. Uh, Vanessa said that she accepts the handicap. Ugh, always so dramatic, that one. Buck, you did a really phenomenal job, and I just, I would really love to do something for you now. Uh, I want to roll turn someone on. Excellent. I was about to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. So rolling with hot. That's an 11. Oh, perfect first roll. So on a 10 up, take a string against them. Cool. So I now have two strings on Buck. Cool. What, is there anything in particular that you're, that you're trying to get him to do? I think we're just going to like slip out and I think the camera fades out appropriately as we like slip out of the room. Excellent. So I think we see you guys sneaking past one of the chaperones and heading into the locker rooms. Phenomenal. And what is your sex move? When you have sex with someone, they gain the condition one of them. While the condition remains, they count as part of your gang. So since he's part of my gang, he doesn't really do anything with us. Okay, cool. 
I'm going to switch over to Purdue. Purdue, Katarina comes up to you and she's got the box of votes for the Valentine's Cupid and Aphrodite. Hey, do you have a vote for Cupid and, and Aphrodite? Um, what's that? Oh, you know, like dance royalty, like the homecoming king and queen. We're like trying to keep it with the theme. Okay. I mean, I like Edwin. Okay. And she hands you like a slip of paper and a pen. And I write down for both king and queen. I write down Edwin and I hand it back. Oh, excellent. <laughs> and she slips it in the box. And like we see her like taking a taking a peek at it. Okay, thanks. And then we see her head off elsewhere. I think I'm going to walk over to Edwin at this point because the inhibitions are starting to slip. Perfect. I'm going to go over to Edwin and just suddenly walk right up to him and stand like a feet in front of him and go, do you want to dance? And I want to spend one of my strings to tempt him to do it. I imagine that when you walk up, Vanessa and I are actively dancing. Yes, definitely. I just step in the middle of you two guys and just go, you want to dance? Leave some room for Purdue. I imagine Vanessa's already thinking about when she can get away with stepping into a private space for a moment so she can cast a hex. So I am going to say that, assuming Edwin is fine with this, I'm going to make a point of not just letting do take Edwin from me. I am passing Edwin on. So I'm just going to lift his chin with one finger, give him a gentle peck on the cheek, on the lips, and say, go on, have some fun. I'll be back in a moment. Have you kissed Edwin before? Let's say no. Yeah, I like the answer no there. That sounds good. Cool. How do you react to that? I think it's fair to make this a turn someone on in context. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So that is plus one for me. I'll do. Oh, perfect. That's a ten. Yep. So you take a string on Ed. Mm-hmm. And Ed, how do you react to that? I think I'm taken very much aback. I, I, I stammer and like stutter. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, 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 of course. And I'm, I'm like awkwardly turned to Purdue. <laughs> perfect. So I imagine that a pop song was playing as I asked, do you want to dance? But then... As uh, Vanessa leaves, like one of the most romantic slow songs ever starts playing, making it super awkward. And Perdu kind of offers like the, the classic one hand on the hip, one like grabbing the other hand pose. I will do so. Cool. So I'm going to grin a little, blow a quick kiss, and then I'm going to head off to, let's just say the bathrooms, so I can have a quiet moment to set up this hex on Diane. So for drama's sake, we've got like a set of restrooms out in the hall, or are you going to sneak out to the locker rooms? And we have Diane in the locker rooms. I think since it is drama's sake, it's going to have to be the locker rooms. Oh, perfect. So I think we see you heading in that direction and like going into the locker rooms. And then I think I want to stick with Purdue and Edwin for a bit, and then we'll come back. Absolutely. So Edwin and Purdue. You guys are slow dancing. Have we had classes together, Purdue? I think we have one class together. Okay. Yeah, as we're dancing, I'm like, I know I've seen you around, but I don't think I even know your name. I'm Perdue. You're Edwin. Yeah. Your voice sounds really familiar. I mean, I think that's because I whispered in your ear earlier that I liked your other jacket. I think our dance pauses for a moment, and then I try to continue dancing. You're a weird one. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's true. So are you, aren't you? Yeah, what do, what do you mean? I mean, I know what you did last summer. I think at this point the dance straight up stops. I think we hear in the background, like, the Juju saying, like, gonna take a quick break, and then switches the music to something totally more upbeat. Ed just starts walking towards the punch bowl. He's like, I need a drink. I just walk next to you. Edwin, which, which uh, punch bowl are you going to? I think I should probably try to keep my cool because I think the right choice yeah. of action is the unspiked one. Okay. But I think upon like I think we we get me walking up and I start dipping out in the unspiked one, then like the camera pans up and I look at the other. We get like my red veiny eyes. I think Perdue at this point goes into his coat pocket and pulls out this really old style flask 
and offers it to Edwin and says, do you want something for which you're punched in? Let's have Edwin roll to keep his cool. That's plus cold. We are not giving you much to work with with these Yeah, rolls, damn. So on a 10 up, you keep your cool and gain insight. And you can ask me a question about the situation. Looking at the spiked punch bowl and seeing how much is, is left, what percentage roughly of the people here have taken it? I guess the last time that you glanced over at the punch bowl, like only a few people had taken it. So it was still fairly full. Looking at it now and looking at the levels of the other of the other two, they're all about like halfway down. But it looks like the one that spiked is very noticeably lower than the other two. Okay. Like, I think some word has gotten around like, oh, that's the fun punch. Cool. I look over at Purdue and snatch the flask out of their hand, take a swig. Can we find somewhere quiet to talk? This isn't really the right place. Sure. And where are you guys going to go? Purdue starts walking and walks into like a really small closet room that you didn't even know was there. And he pulls out a key and opens it with a key that, well, a janitor would have one, but no one knows why Purdue has one. I think inside we see a bunch of sports equipment. Uh, and I think I'm going to jump over to Vanessa. So you've just gone into the locker room, and it sounds like you want to hex somebody. Mm-hmm. So I could give Diane flat out hallucinations, but I think that would be incredibly obvious. I want to mess with Diane's head in a far more subtle way. and. False prophecies is so tempting, given that this is a a literal goddess I'm dealing with. But it's either going to be false prophecies or non-existent subtext from everyone else in this room. And I think the land has got to be more fun. Excellent. So are you trying to, I guess, like make her think that other people are, are thinking something? Exactly. I don't have full control over how she experiences it, but I'm definitely wanting to make her paranoid, get under her skin, feel like everyone is out to get her in a completely different way, and she's having to guard herself on so many different fronts. Excellent. So can you give me a visual for this? Like we've we've established that you're going down into the locker rooms to do this. Like how how do you cast a hex and where in the locker room are you? <laughs> Since it's such an absurd location for this. <laughs> yeah, so I imagine I would head into the locker rooms and then go into one of the toilets within the locker rooms to give me sort of multiple layers of privacy. And I'm doing this with a coin. I get a small marker pen. Oh, no, not marker pen. Just some form of pen that can easily be erased and just drawing an occult circle onto the floor we're talking pentagram runes from various different world languages the works almost full metal alchemist desk i'm imagining and i'm just going to place this coin in the center of the circle and then i'm probably starting to feel the punch at this point And I'm going to close my eyes, swaying slightly, put my hands on either side of this circle. And I am just going to picture Diane as clearly in my mind as I can and will this to happen. So shall I roll dark to see how well the hex went? Yes. Okay. So it works, but choose one. It either does one harm to me, it has weird side effects, or it triggers my darkest self. And I think this is an easy one. It goes for weird side effects. Excellent. Cool, cool, cool. So, Diane, you've got the paranoia. I have an idea for side effects if we want to lean into that. Yeah. I think that because the hallucinogenics are starting to kick in, I think that me and, like, when you were trying to think of me, you also kind of, like, slipped Edwin in there a couple times, like, in your... That's fair. I think I'm irrationally drawn to Edwin, and Edwin is the only thing, like, the only person in this room not saying horrible things about me right now. I like it. It's going to bring so much drama. Let's see this happen. I'm 100% for this. We turn the page and see the storyteller. He is looking directly at the reader, his text bubble reading, 
The music is swelling and tensions are high, as curses sail through the fairy-lit sky. The queen and the witch are set for a war, and something more tragic just might be in store. But that's all for today by Hell and by Heaven. Come back so soon for issue number seven. The next panel pulls back and we see that box of chocolates is open. The candy inside is crawling with maggots. The roses have wilted to an almost deadly black on the table. And with that, our issue comes to an end. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Huth and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator On Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. She can be found at Playwright on Twitter or tphuth94 on Instagram. This issue was GM by Elliot Peterson. She can be found on Twitter at Elliot Yelenton. Diane is played by T. Huth. Edwin is played by me, Anthony Sheets. Purdue is played by Simon Meskins. You can find him on Twitter as at Gilberecki. Vanessa is played by Ardent Dawn. The music for this issue was Classic Horror 1 by Kevin McLeod. A link to the license and his website will be in the show notes. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or on Patreon at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes and recommending it to friends. Word of mouth is really the best way for us to bring these stories to more people. If you'd like to support us financially, check us out on patreon.com slash moonharborheroes. Supporting us there will give you access to bonus episodes each month. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.